Hi everyone, I'm Trish and welcome to my women's online Bible study. Today we're covering Numbers chapters 15 through 17. So let's say a short prayer and dive right in. Heavenly Father, please give me clarity to speak and the hearer the ear to hear. Please impart on us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of all your ways that we may walk upright before you. Help us to share your word with others in truth and with clarity. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So grab your Bibles and turn with me to Numbers 15. I am reading from the New King James Version. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you have come into the land, you are to inhabit, which I am giving to you. And you make an offering by fire to the Lord, a burnt offering or a sacrifice, to fulfill a vow or as a freewill offering or in your appointed feast, to make a sweet aroma to the Lord from the herd or the flock. Then he who presents his offering to the Lord shall bring a grain offering of one-tenth of an ephah of fine flour mixed with one-fourth of a hen of, a, of oil. And one-fourth of a hen of wine as a drink offering you shall prepare with the burnt offering of, or the sacrifice for each lamb. Or for a ram you shall prepare as a grain offering two-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with one-third of a hen of oil as a drink offering. You shall offer one-third of a hen of wine as a sweet aroma to the Lord. And when you prepare a young bull as a burnt offering or as a sacrifice to fulfill a vow or as a peace offering to the Lord, then shall be offered with the young bull, a grain offering of three tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with a half of with a half a hen of oil, and you shall bring as the drink offering half a hen of wine as an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. Thus it shall be done for for each young bull, for each ram, or for each lamb or young goat, according to the number that you prepare. So you shall do with every one according to their number. All who are native born shall do these things in this manner in presenting an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. And if a stranger dwells with you or whoever is among you throughout your generations and would present an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord, just as you do, so shall he do. One ordinance shall be for you or of the, of the assembly as, and for the stranger who dwells with you, an ordinance forever throughout your generations. As you are, so shall the stranger be before the Lord. One law and one custom shall be for you and for the stranger who dwells with you. Again, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land uh, to which I bring you, then it will be, when you eat of the bread of the land, that you shall offer up a heave offering to the Lord. You shall offer up a cake of the first of your ground, ground meal as a heave offering. As a heave offering of the threshing floor, so shall you offer it up. Of the first of your ground meal, you shall give to the Lord a heave offering throughout your generations. If you sin unintentionally and do not observe all these commandments, which the Lord has spoken to Moses, all that the Lord has commanded you by the hand of Moses from the day the Lord gave you commandment and onward throughout your generations, then it will be, if it is unintentionally committed without the knowledge of the congregation, that the whole con congregation shall offer one young bull as a burnt offering, as a sweet aroma to the Lord, with his grain offering and his drink offering, according to the ordinance, <clears throat> and one kid of the goats as a sin offering. So the priest shall make atonement for the whole congregation of the children of Israel, and it shall be forgiven them, for it was unintentional. They shall bring their offering, an offering made by fire to the Lord, and their sin offering before the Lord for their unintended sin. It shall be forgiven the whole congregation of the children of Israel and the stranger who dwells among them, because all the people did it unintentionally. And if a person sins unintentionally, then he shall bring a female goat in its first year as a sin offering. So the priest shall make atonement for the person who sins unintentionally. When he sins unintentionally before the Lord to make atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. You shall have one law for him who sins unintentionally, for him who is native born among the children of Israel, and for the stranger who dwells among them. But the person who does anything presumptuously, whether he is a, whether he is native born or a stranger, that one brings reproach on the Lord, and he shall be cut off from among his people, because he has despised the word of the Lord, 
and has broken his commandments. That person shall be completely cut off. His guilt shall be upon him. Now, while the children of Israel were in the, in the wilderness, they found a man gathering sticks on the Sabbath day. And those who found him gathering sticks brought him to Moses and Aaron and to the congregation they put and to all the congregation. They put him under guard because it had been it had not been explained what should be done to him. Then the Lord said to Moses, that man must surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones outside the camp. So as the Lord commanded Moses, all the congregation brought him outside the camp and stoned him with stones and he died. Again, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel, tell them to make tassels on the corners of their garments throughout their generations and to put a blue thread in the tassel of the, uh, of the corners. And you shall have the tassel that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them and that you may not follow the hollow tree to which your own heart and your own eyes are inclined and that you may remember and do all my commandments and be holy for your God. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord, your God. Number 16. Now Korah, the son of uh, Ishar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, with Datham and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, two men and took men, took men, and they rose up before Moses with some of the children of Israel. 250 leaders of the congregation, representatives of the congregation, men of renown. They gathered together against Moses and Aaron and said to them, you take too much upon yourselves for all the congregation is holy, even uh, every one of them. And the Lord is among them. Why then do you exalt yourselves above the assembly of the Lord? So when Moses heard it, he fell on his face and he spoke to Korah and all his company saying, tomorrow morning, the Lord will show who is his and who is holy and will cause him to come near to him. That one whom he chooses, he will cause to come near to him. Do this, take censers, Korah and all your company, put fire in them and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the, that, that man, it shall be that the man whom the Lord chooses is the holy one. You take too much upon yourselves, you sons of Levi. Then Moses said to Korah, hear now, you sons of Levi, is it a small thing to you that the, that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to uh, himself to do the work of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to serve him and that he has brought you near to himself, you and all your brethren, the sons of Levi with you. And are you seeking the priesthood also? Therefore, you all... You and all your company are gathered together against the Lord. And what is Aaron that you complain that you complain against him? And Moses uh, sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab. But they said, "We will not come up. Is it a small thing that you have brought us up out of the land of brought us up out of a land flowing with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness that you should keep acting like a prince over us?" Moreover, you have not brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey, nor given us inheritance or fields and vineyards. Will you put out the eyes of these men? Well, well, we will not come up. Then Moses was very angry and said to the Lord, do not respect their offering. I have not taken one donkey from them, nor have I hurt one of them. And Moses said to Korah, tomorrow you and all your company be present before the Lord. They, I'm sorry, you and they, as well as Aaron. Let each take his censer and put incense in it, and each of you bring his censer before the Lord. 250 censers, both you and Aaron, each with his censer. So every man took his censer, put fire in it, fire in it, laid incense on it, and stood at the door of the tabernacle of meeting with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Then the glory of the Lord appeared to all the congregation. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, separate yourselves from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. Then they fell on their faces and said, O oh God, O oh God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin and you be, uh, and you be angry with all the congregation. So the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the congregation saying, get away from the tents of Korah, Datham and Abiram. Then Moses rose and went to Datham and Abiram, Abiram and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spoke to the congregation saying, depart now from the tents of these wicked men. Touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in all their sins. 
So they got away from around the tents of Korah, Datham, and Abiram. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood at the door of their tents with their wives, their sons, and their little children. And Moses said, By this you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them on my, of my own will. If these men die naturally like all men, or if they are visited by the common fate of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord creates a new thing, and the earth opens and the earth opens its mouth and swallows them up with all that belongs to them, to them, and they go down alive into the pit. Then you will understand that these men have rejected the Lord. Now it came to pass as he had, as he finished speaking all these words, that the ground split apart under them, and the and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with their households and all the men of Korah with all their goods. So they and all those with them went down alive into the pit. They, uh, the earth closed over them and they perished from among the assembly. Then all Israel who were around them fled at their cry. For they said, at least the earth swallow us up also. And a fire came out from the Lord and consumed the 250 men who were offering incense. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, tell Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, to pick up the censers out of the blaze for they are holy and scatter the fire some distance away the censers of these men who sinned against their own souls let them be made into hampered plates as a covering for the altar because they presented them before the lord therefore they are holy and they shall be a sign to the children of israel so eliezer the priest took the bronze censers which those who were burned up had presented and they were hammered out as a covering on the altar to be a memorial to the children of Israel, that no outsider who is not a descendant of Aaron should come near to offer incense before the Lord. But he might not become like Korah and his companions, just as the Lord had said to him through Moses. On the next day, all the congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, saying, you have killed the people of the Lord. Now it happened when the congregation had gathered against Moses and Aaron that they turned toward the tabernacle of meeting and suddenly the cloud covered it and the glory of the Lord appeared. Then Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of meeting and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, get away from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell on their faces. So Moses and said to Aaron, Take a censer and put fire in it from the altar. Put incense on it and take it quickly to the congregation and make atonement for them. For wrath has gone out from the Lord. The plague has begun. Then Aaron took it as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the assembly. And already the plague had begun among, among the people. So he put in the incense and made atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living. So the plague was stopped. Now those who died in the plague were 14,700 besides those who died in the Korah incident. So Aaron returned to Moses at the door of the tabernacle of meeting, for the plague had stopped. Number 17, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel and get from them a rod from each father's house. All their leaders, according to their father's houses, 12 rods, write each man's name on his rod and you shall write Aaron's name on the rod of Levi. For there shall be one rod for the head of each father's house. Then you shall place them in the tabernacle of meeting before the testimony where I meet with you. And it shall be that the rod of the man whom I choose will blossom. Thus I will rid myself of the complaints of the children of Israel, which they make against you. So Moses spoke to the children of Israel and each of their leaders gave him a rod apiece for each leader according to their father's houses. Twelve rods and the rod of Aaron was among their rods. And Moses placed the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of witness. Now it came to pass on the next day that Moses went into the tabernacle of witness and behold, the rod of Aaron of the house of Levi had sprouted and put forth buds, had produced blossoms and yielded ripe almonds. <laughs> then Moses brought out all the rods from before the Lord to all the children of Israel. And they looked and each man took his, took his rod. And the Lord said to Moses, Bring Aaron's rod back before the te te testimony to be kept as a sign against the rebels, that you may put their complaints away from me, lest they die. 
Thus did Moses, just as the Lord had commanded him. So he did. So the children of Israel spoke to Moses, saying, Surely we die, we perish, we all perish. Whoever uh, even comes near the tabernacle of the, the Lord must die. Shall we all utterly die? Heavenly Father, bless the reading of your word and let it fill us up. I'm sorry. Heavenly Father, bless the reading of your word. Let it fill us up until we're able to eat of it again. If you're just here for scripture read through, thank you for coming to read through scripture with me. I really appreciate it and I hope to see you again next time. If you're here for more in-depth Bible study, stick around and we'll dive right in. Okay. So we've arrived at chapter 15. Um, chapter 15 verses 1 through 29 covers the laws uh, committed for unintentional sins. So if someone, either the... Um, the children of Israel or any a stranger who dwells with them, uh, the laws are alike for both um, on what you should bring as a sacrifice offering for any sin committed unintentionally. Um, and then we come to 30, where a person is picking up sticks and working on the Sabbath day. And so Moses doesn't say, let's stone him. Let's see. Moses says he, he he goes to the Lord and asks the Lord what should be done. He waits for the to give the word from the Lord. The Lord knows our hearts. This isn't just some regular case where a judge on the earth who doesn't know or some harsh judgment from the Lord. He this guy's rebelling. He the Lord just gave the law saying when you enter the um uh the land if you're doing something unintentional then you should offer these sacrifices. If his heart was right, the Lord would allow him to bring back the sacrifice. But his heart obviously isn't right because he's put to death and he's stoned right there. And it's, it's the seriousness of keeping the Sabbath day holy to the Lord. You're supposed to be resting. You're picking up sticks. He did it intentionally. It wasn't unintentionally. He broke it on because he wanted to. Yeah. He was rebelling against the Lord. Is the Lord knows his heart. He probably would have went on and did even more evil things. Who knows? Off um, chapter 15, verses 37 through 41, special instructions are given to add tassels to uh, their garments as a reminder to be holy because the Lord is holy. So it's a reminder to the people to remain holy. Uh, chapter 16, the entirety of the chapter covers uh, the Reubenites and Levites. They rebel against Mary, uh, Moses and Aaron. Now the Levites are the priestly people, but um, they they rebel against Moses and Aaron saying, who, who told you to be in charge? You know, um, uh, we all should be in charge. <laughs> Yeah, but they're wrong about that in in their uh, in their rebellious ways, and a lot of them die. I mean, it's like uh, fourteen thousand seven hundred. I'm reading from verse forty nine uh, because of the plague. Moses and Aaron uh, have to offer us a uh, hurry up and offer uh, a sacrifice, which Aaron does because the plague breaks out uh, against the people who has risen up against Moses and Aaron. Um, about who should who should lead the people, um, and the uh, a special thing happens. Uh, the earth opens up, swallows up some of those people who leads the rebellion and complains against the Lord, and uh, they die. And so uh, that's not even okay. So I I have to back up. So the fourteen thousand seven hundred that I mentioned in verse forty nine. That's those are the people who died in the plague after the earth swallowed up the um, the Korites and who else? Uh, the Reubenites and the Levites. So each from their tribe. So Korah and his family, even their their kids um, were swallowed up. So yeah, their whole families uh, because the, there's their father houses and they're standing with their uh, with their family. And so the earth swallows them up and. Uh, some people scatter and run away, but they don't get in, they don't get far at all before uh, they're consumed. Two hundred and fifty men, and so uh, the fourteen thousand seven hundred listed down in forty nine, or in addition to the families plus the two hundred and fifty men of all the people who uh, rebelled against Moses and Aaron, uh, who should be uh, leading the people, um, because the Lord surely didn't bring them out there to die. Um, and he, he wants to take them to the promised land, but they just keep rebelling and they won't have faith. No matter how many signs the Lord is giving to these people, he's trying to make a, 
a holy nation of the children of Israel, but they are uh, stiff-necked, super stiff-necked. That's where the term come from, stiff-necked and rebellious people. And they remain that way throughout the entirety of the book of the Bible. And then we come until God comes down himself and does it uh, through, you know, the son of the Godhead, Jesus Christ. And so, uh, just in case you were, you were wondering, is, is there any hope <laughs> through men? No, no, there is none. Only through the Lord Jesus Christ are we saved, uh, from our sinful ways, uh, Okay, so, so sorry, moving on to 17, uh, Aaron's rod buzz, the whole chapter is about the Lord showing as a sign to future people who might want to rebel against the uh, the house of uh, Aaron um, and who the Lord puts in charge. He They get a, a, a staff from each, um, a rod from each, um, the leader of each house of, or of each tribe, children of Israel, the 12 tribes, and then they put them down and, and, and um, and uh, Aaron's rod blossoms and even has almonds. Um, I don't know if they ate them or not. <laughs> uh, uh, and that that's it. They uh, uh, He left it there. They leave Aaron's rod there as a sign to the people so that they won't rebel against the Lord again. It's just different ways that the Lord is um, using to... Uh, give give the people a sign every time they reveal uh and moses he's so faithful uh you know thank god for uh a saint like him of old who always went in and prayed for the people he was such a great leader um because when the lord was ready to destroy not that moses changed the lord's mind the lord already knew that he wasn't going to destroy he's just speaking to him as as to make it human humanly like um so he knew that aaron uh just like he knows when i'm going to cry out and pray to him or to have mercy on me or somebody in my family whom i love who might rebel against the lord or say something crazy and i have to say you know uh lord forgive me you can think about people who who do certain uh things like um if you have kids and one of your kids does something uh to uh, harm someone you might want mercy to be shown on on your child and then the other person who of uh, the person whose uh, child that your child hurt wants punishment for that child and so uh, you might uh say you know lord show him mercy through his punishment or something like that when you're um praying uh for someone uh i'm pretty probably off topic from uh rambling on so uh <laughs> I was within topic, um, but I but I am starting to ramble, so I'm just going to wrap it up, and I will see you guys next time. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and bring you peace, both now and forevermore. Till next time, thanks. Bye.